Hey everybody, it's Dustin over at Geek Maddox, and today I'm joined by Chris Busilla. Um, he is the owner of the Logi Wiki page that a lot of you guys use to get diode bone measurements, charts, stuff like that. We're going to be using that website today in a chart that, um, uh, Chris, you know the name of the gentleman what, that made these charts? Here yeah. now. All right, guys, so what we are going to do, we are going to start with just jumping over to the Logi Wiki page. We'll go ahead and show you that. Um, and the, uh, that's, you know, as we've talked about before, the Logi Wiki page has a ton of information. All of my diode mode measurements are there. There's a ton of other information for MacBooks. Uh, and, and that's what we're going to kind of get into. We have the um, 8200165 boot up diagram, which is the first thing I want to show you. Uh, essentially, that's a 2017 MacBook Air. It's a couple of different years, actually. But um, that, 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 this diagram will work for not only that, but a bunch of other models. It's just, it's essentially, and Chris can kind of verify or, or tell me if I'm wrong. It's going to be the same across multiple different models, right? Yeah. If you look at the title, it says, uh, Ivy bridge has well, broad well, it'll work on a little bit more stuff than that, but that's kind of the main range, you know, maybe was that 2011 to 2015, 16 ish. Okay. Awesome. And then and then essentially what you have here also in this chart, just so you can kind of have an understanding of what you're looking at, is a green light on your MagSafe versus an orange light on your MagSafe, or, you know, those things that you need. So essentially you'll have the green light first and two seconds and then the orange light. That's what you're looking for. So if you have that then, and still no power, then essentially your issue is going to be after this. And if you do not have that, then your issue is going to be before it. Okay. So... Um, if you look here, it goes all the way from a G3 state all the way down to an S3 state. And Chris, what happens after an, an S3 state? Is the computer turning on or what happens? An S3 state is basically suspend mode. Um, that's when the computer suspends to memory. Uh, the memory is turned on at that point, but the CPU isn't fully powered up. Um, you need to get to an S0 state for that. And we've got some diagrams here that will take you through the S3 to S0 state. Um, and these are documented out with uh, gray boxes are power rails, green are your power good signals, blue are enables, yellow are clocks, and orange are not really signals, but they have something to do with the sequence. Um, and then after that, we get to the reset state um, for the platform. So platform reset basically resets all the chips, um, I think aside from the CPU. So you're going to get your camera IC uh, resets and basically anything that's turning on with the computer. Um, and then you post, which posting, um, there's a lot more to this. Um, we're still trying to figure it out. Basically, um, once the platform resets and the CPU is in overheating, it should read your EFI. And if you look on the wiki under the EFI pages, I've got some good... Uh, uh, oscilloscope charts of what a booting MacBook should look like on this stage right here. Then it turns on the SMC while it's reset. Then you should see activity on the low pin count frame uh, and low pin count um, data lines. And after that, it initializes RAM. And I think right after that, it initializes the audio I see in chimes. All right. So essentially, there you have a, a brief description of what you need for the computer to turn on. And I, I did want to just kind of, if you look here at, at, at these, you know, PP3V42 G3 hot, you know, th this is a good chart for beginners, really anybody that is diagnosing a MacBook because, you know, not everybody understands fully how to use a schematic. And this chart will help you say, hey, look, I clearly need um, P or DCN ISOL gate R at six volts before I'm going to have something down here, which is PPVRTC. Now, I also see in here, Chris, that there's a lot of things that say like S5 here. Um, I'm pointing with my hand, that's not helping anybody, but S5, <laughs> um, where did I just see that you were scrolling as I was looking? Oh, right here, so PP3V3 uh, S5, S5, and then I also see different uh, power states. So can you describe to me what the, the different power states are? Sure. You start in a G3 state. Um, so the beginning of the G3 state is there's no power on the MacBook. Mm -hmm. um, you connect power, and somewhere down here, you get into the end of the G3 state. So at this point, you have uh, your PP bus voltage. G3 means the computer is powered, but it's not yet off. Um, so you've got G3, which is... Um, powered either by battery or charger that goes to that dual mos uh, the dual diode um, that's around the ISL area. Mm -hmm. 
um, then you uh, get to S5, which is the computer off, uh, then S4, which is the computer hibernating, S3, which is the computer sleeping in suspend mode, and then S0 means the CPU has power, you're getting fan spin, um, and basically everything's powered at that point. So, so you should have a working computer far being maybe a dead CPU. Um, so dead CPU, posting problem, that stuff we just kind of went through. Also, um, I wanted to point out that even an expert can use a diagram like this because you can't actually see all this stuff in the schematic. Um, what happens is there's some programming involved and there's some steps that even if you can read the schematic, you wouldn't know that, for example, this stuff has to happen before the um, before you get, you know, down further. So, so essentially, this takes a ton of work. And who who made all these charts? Uh, Piranoff made most of them. Um, a lot of this stuff is trial and error. You basically take a working board and you remove components. Like, say, you re remove the enable si uh, signal from PP three v three S five, and you see what around it is powered and isn't powered, and from that you can infer what's needed to get to that next step down. Awesome. Well, definitely thinking for me because I've I've made a lot of money, using, fixed a lot of MacBooks using these charts, <laughs> and it has helped me a lot. So let's jump back here. Oh, me too. Me too. <laughs> and let's go to the one that we're actually kind of here for today, the CD3215 boot up sequence. So essentially the chart that you, we were just looking at was, as Chris put it, 2011 to 2016, uh, a lot of models in there. So and then what you're going to have here is the CD3215, which is not 2016 and newer, but it is USB-C type MacBooks. And Chris, it, and ask, I've got a question. Will this, is it similar for maybe a CD, a different version of the CD3215? Um, this will basically apply to, um, I think, all of the USB-C computers um, except for maybe the MacBook. I think the first MacBook didn't have a CD3215. Um, but this is basically the, origin, the the beginning stages of the other chart we are looking at. Um, it goes from power not being connected to being G3 hot. Um, there's another page for the T2 version of this that has a lot more signal lines. Um, we don't quite understand how that one boots, but we have some documentation on it. This one, um, it'll apply to basically any T1 uh, or SMC based uh, CD3215 computer and the specific documentation here is geared towards the A1706 uh, so if you apply this on a A1707 I think which is what, no you have an A1990 we're working on today um, so your net names and your chip designators might be different, the voltages might be a little bit different, but this chart will enable you to figure out what to look and for. And Chris, let's break that order. down just a little bit more because, um, you know, we're trying to gear towards a little bit more beginners. So when you say, like, the, the designation, so when what, what he's saying by that, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is with PP3V3 UPC XB LDO, on the model that we're working on, or I'm working on, that may be, that name may be a little different. Correct. Uh, I don't remember exactly which ones, but I know there are a few of them. I think TBA, VDDA is different on some models. Um, also, your chip designators, you know, your U3200, it might not be exactly that. Um, you just have to look on the, the schematics and the board views and just kind of apply what's going on here to the, the different models. It, it, exactly. And, and the way that we can do that in... Um, so let's be, I, I actually, I was looking at this chart when I was fixing this computer and this was one of the lines here that I just grabbed and I went to go put it in the board view and I didn't find anything. So what I did was I actually, just to show you guys how you can kind of still find the lines, even if it's maybe a different name, is you can go to the schematic, just like Chris said, and let's jump to one of the CD3215s actually. Okay, so uh, this is the CD3215 on the schematic. And what I did was I essentially just looked here for the, the same name to see if I would find it. And I did. And from there, what I did was went ahead and found a way to test that line or check the voltage on that line 
um, through the schematics. So if I look here on the schematics, it says that the eight, it's right on the CD3215, and it go, also goes to this diode. I'm probably not going to be able to um, test the voltage under the CD3215, right? So the next best thing would probably be go not to this diode. What did I just say? Um, to this. Dual package MOSFET. Thank you. Um, and then so I'm going to go to the Q3100 on the board view. Another tip is you can open the like an A1706 board and find the exact thing and then you can see pin numbers on say the CD3215 and if it's say pin 13 on an A1706 it's going to be pin 13 on an A1708 uh, or whatever so you can still use that information you, you, you can relate it to whichever line it is. Oh very cool. Awesome. So and that's what I'll do sometimes if I can't find if I can't find it by looking because I'm I'm horrible at looking at that much information in one page mm -hmm. and and you know finding one little name. <laughs> right. That's definitely when the the find option tr tries to help me anyway. Um. So after that, or let's see, where did I want to go to next, Chris? Mm mm mm. Oh, you want to do, let's go over the XB on the different lines for the different CDs. Sure. So, uh, if you look at your um, board view, on one side you're going to see uh, XBA and XB, or I'm sorry, XB and XA uh, CD32s. Those are the ones that are on opposite sides of the board. And then you're going to find TA and TB and those are the two CD32s that are on the same side of the board. So like on this side, you see how you have one CD32 on top and one on the bottom? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, that's the X side. Now if you go over to the other wing of the board, you're going to see two CD32s next to each other, and that would be TA and TB. Okay, so these two. Yep, and those are on the top of the board if the computer is assembled. Mm -hmm. So I think that might mean top, but I don't know. I think that's how not flex board view because that one shows both of them at the same time. But if you use the open board view, it does classify mm -hmm. as top as the, the when the computer is assembled, like you said. Um, so the next thing that I wanted to bring up was that you do have the. It says, "Hey, check these lines," you know, with the XB and. and but that is for each CD3215, right? So if you have, you know, just because you have the voltage on that particular line or, uh, doesn't mean that, that, um, that another CD3215 with that same line hasn't failed. And you need all of the CD3215s on the board to be working before you can draw that 20 volts, right? Correct. Okay. So... Um, I believe that was it on that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the MacBook that I actually have in front of me. So what I did here was I have my little USB-C amp meter, okay? And I'm going to plug in to this um, one of the ports. And you'll see here that I'm getting 5 volts. Maybe you'll see. 5 volts at 162 milliamp draw. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to take a look at the, the port that I'm plugged into and kind of have it make sure that I'm working on the right CD3215 and on those lines. So, if the is there an easy way, Chris, to figure out which on the board which CD3215 is associated with which port? I have to I have to trace it every time. Okay, I, I can never remember which one's which. Um, one quick note is that if it's not getting up to 20 volts and it's not rebooting, it's there's a good possibility there's something wrong with that circuit or that chip. Because if it's a good CD3215 and there's another bad one, that CD3215 will boot, let's, let's call it boot in quote marks, um, it'll boot to stage, I think it's 10 in that chart, um, and it'll try to communicate. It'll communicate with the SMC, and the SMC will communicate with everything else. So if it's not boot looping, and it's not getting the 20 volts, that's often a bad CD32 or a short somewhere in this diagram here. Before stage 10. 
correct. Okay. Um, when it gets to stage 10, you see where it says SM bus, SMC, um, that's the clock and data lines. It's actually communicating with the SMC. Uh, and once it communicates with the SMC, the SMC goes, hey, S hey uh, XA, XB, TA, TB, are you guys all good? Um, I know you've got your uh, PP, 3V3, G3 hot. Can you, can you answer? And when it doesn't get a response, then that CD3215 that's powered with the USB-C cable will then reboot and start over. I see. And just so kind of waiting for that signal. Hanging like, exactly. When it's hanging like you've got it right now, you notice how it stays at 5 volts. It doesn't go, um, and it's staying in a fairly um, stable milliamp reading, I believe. Mm -hmm. So there's probably an internal short in the CD3215, or there's an external short, or there's another problem in that power rail, so it can't get to that stage 10 where it'll want to reboot. So essentially, if I'm getting 5 volts on my charger, I need to be looking at this chart, and I need to be making sure that every single one of the CD3213s on the, or th th CD3215s on the board have all of these voltages and if they don't either one is short the cd13 itself is bad and so and, and that's essentially what we're going to tr kind of try and find out so let's take some measurements here cool so i'm going to switch you guys to the scope cam well not first let's find out actually what we're looking for so we want to figure out at what cd 3215 i'm plugged into so if i go to the schematic so let me run through that again so I can kind of describe it so what I did here essentially was I plugged in my US my USB-C cable into one of the ports here and then I quickly checked the two fuses as Chris pointed out that there's I'm um, going they're white they're easy to spot out and normally they're gonna be near the CD 3215 so you can just check to make sure you have voltage there to figure out which port that you're plugged into corresponds with which CD 3215 so if I check, if you see from my scope camera, I have one fuse right here, and then I have another fuse right here. All right, so what I'm going to do is check the voltage on this top fuse, and I have nothing there. I'm going to check it on the bottom fuse, and I have 5 volts. Okay, so if I go back to my board view software, and I select the fuse that, I, that had the voltage, which was this one, you can see it actually it connects inside this CD3215, which is UB300. So if I go back to my schematics, and I search UB300, I will find it here. And that's how now we're on the same CD on our schematic, the same CD3215 that we have that we're actually working on. So we're going to go back to LogiWiki. Wherever it hid. Okay. Um, and we're going to start going through our power rail. So the first one is. Because you just did. You just did step one, because that's the 5 volts you're seeing on the fuse right now. Yep, so we're, we're going to go to the first LDO, which is the PP3V3 UPC XB, which I don't think on this one it's XB, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the UB300 and look for it here. All right, there we go. So this one is TA instead of XB. So that's what, that's what we were kind of talking about earlier with it is a little different. So I'm going to look at where I can probe and test that line, and there's a test point over here. And we will switch you guys to the scope camera right there. And I have 2.198. So that is lower than what Chris was telling us we needed, which was the PP3V3. Now, as Chris was saying... Now double check the input on that one before you go, um, before you test anything else. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, Everybody forgets that step, so... <laughs> Let's go back. The input to this will be VBUS. All right. So we'll check that capacitor. That's the input line. This is where you should have 5 volts. And assuming you don't have an internal board issue, 
Um, you should always have five volts there if you have five volts on that fuse. But say you had a bad fuse or an internal um, trace issue, that would be low. Okay, beautiful. So I do have the five volts there. So at this point, we can declare that CD3215 bad, right? Uh, double, double check your resistance to ground on the LDO you just measured. But if it was if it was short though, wouldn't I get zero volts or so much lower because it was two point one instead of zero? Usually yes. Usually yes. But as good practice, I will check the the resistance here. I actually normally do it in continuity mode, or not continuity mode, but diode mode. But not to check the resistance, but to check for shorts. So because I get a beep when it's short, and no, it is. Oh well, good. it's actually. I have red probe on ground. I should get some sort of reading okay. there if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes you'll get capacitors that aren't like a dead short. There's some resistance inside them, so mm -hmm. those can be those can be a little bit harder to find. I see. All right. So for this, but one, I'd say you had 20 or 30 ohms, then you would, you know, it could be anything on the line. So in this case, you probably got a bad CD3215. All right. So. And that would be awesome if that was the only thing wrong with this MacBook, but I highly doubted it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check one or two more and see, because I believe these are all doing something different from my memory. So let's now I'm plug into the next one here. All right, so I'm going to check the fuse again. The other fuse this time, though, and make sure you guys are on the scope camera. Yes, you are. and I get five volts again. I'll show you what I do because for me it's quicker. Go to the schematic for a second. Okay. All of the LDOs are right here. So you can check. Um, oh. Two, three, wow. one, eight, one, eight, and one, one. And I don't think you need to check um, these two. So it's basically just these four caps. Oh, on this one. cool. Wow, that is actually a lot easier and faster. So I'm just going just gonna to right click on and then you'll, as you'll see, if I go to flex board view, it does jump to that cap. And I'll go on the board and check it. And again, that one is also low. But it's getting, it's getting hot, very hot, actually, as I'm touching it. All right, so that one is short internally. And since that, that one specifically, the PP3V3 uh, LDO, since it's an LDO, which is a low dropout um, power supply, um, and if you remember the block diagram, it basically goes directly from that V bus, I think it's called, uh, to an LDO to that line. So if that line is anything less than 3.3, you either have a CD3215 problem, a capacitor problem, or an input voltage problem. The other um, LDOs could have something else controlling them, so you can't, you should have those voltages, but they don't always mean that, hey, the CD3215 is bad. But that 3V3 one, always. So, Chris, is there anything else that you think we should know specifically about the CD3215s and, and, and essentially the, if we have 5 volts on the charger, um, other than looking at this chart, what, what else do you think would be is, is a, maybe a signature failure? Like on iPhones, we have signature failures all the time, the audio I see, baseband issues, and you know we, we know why we have these failures. Is there anything like that with the CD thirty two fifteens, or at maybe something? It's almost always it's almost always liquid um, or bad chargers uh, that cause this type of thing. Um, usually, you get just a little bit of liquid on any of those G three hots or LDOs. Like for example, if if you get liquid on top of that three V three LDO, what happens? Um, again, if you look at the the block diagram, you're going to see that's basically shorting the input five volts. Uh, to ground and it's going to pull too much power through the chip and it's going to burn out the internal diodes and other things um, and then it's going to go bad. So essentially it's not like a design flaw it's more of people yeah. just are abusing their units. <laughs> They're mostly liquid when I, when I work on them. 
All right, guys, that's all we have for you today. I did want to thank Chris again for coming out and explaining everything to us. Um, also, sorry about all the clips and everything. It was hard to do, uh, you know, audio for two people at the same time. And OBS took me a while to figure that out. And so I had to cut clips and all that good stuff. So that's why it's all choppy there. But uh, I hope you learned something and enjoy the rest of your day.